We're going live. I think we're live. We are live. Does this record? Hello. Oh, it records to YouTube. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> it's live on YouTube. Yeah, I, I'm aware. I just wasn't sure. I remember if it records. I'm not Phil, you know? Oh, okay. But I am in control. <laughs> What's up, Sam? How are things? Can you keep an eye on the chat for everybody? Because I've got a million things going on. Um, I can. I can um, do that. Let us know where you are tuning in from. This is a last minute live. So maybe there's zero people. It might just be a nice little conversation with you and me, Will. Yeah, I think that's what's going to be. I don't think Phil's coming. Phil is on vacation. So, um, but we wanted to be here to tell you guys about our new lighting course. I don't know if we're going to go the full hour. Maybe we'll only do 20, 30 minutes, but we're not going to do any critiques today necessarily. We're going to do some Q&A. Maybe we should have our uh, camera discussion that we were having earlier. <laughs> well, Barry's here, so we can just talk to Barry. Oh, yeah, and Barry's here. <laughs> Ciao. Oh, and be noise. Thank yeah. you for being here. Rip Welcome. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Do we have a good question for uh, our camera? If, if you could get any new piece of camera gear, what if would you money get? Didn't, if money didn't matter. Money doesn't matter. What's the next thing you get? Yeah. <laughs> you're not chop liver. <laughs> what am I? There's like a little YouTube notification and you came up before the, you beat YouTube in the chat. So just, I didn't. <laughs> you beat YouTube. Oh. I'm watching from work today, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we're also a little delayed, I think, to you guys. At least what we're watching, it's a little delayed to you. But welcome to the chat. We are, uh, we are going to talk to you guys about our lighting course that we did recently. Um, it's now open to the public at Udemy.com, uh, I think. An email went out to photography and friends. We have it for sale for ten dollars. Um, if anyone would like to uh, buy that, good morning from St. Louis. Is that where STL? Yo. Very. I want an eighteen millimeter one point four LMWR. <laughs> the Fuji. Yeah. So you are going wide now, huh, Very? Is that what you decided? I mean, I guess if you if you could get anything, Sam, what would you I'm, get? Well, all about that. Um. I don't know. I wouldn't get anything. I'm tired ah. of buying things. I'm selling everything, everyone. I'm getting rid of all my photography gear. Yeah, we should talk about this. You're not doing. Oh, I think I just, I think I just made myself disappear. <laughs> Dang it. So, yeah. so, anyways, now that it's just you and oh, I'm back. Right. <laughs> I'm having, I'm having problems with this. So sorry. <laughs> I think my next purchase is going to be a 14 millimeter 2.8. Yeah. Ooh, what camera system are you on, Ryan? Yeah. Do some. Why is everyone going wide? Why do people? That's a fun one. Like telephoto, wide angle, medium range. Why? 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 Mm. After buying I... a second camera, van, I've room in camera bag. Oh, that's I a good question. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Well, let's. We are going to do some Q and A here. Should we say there? Let's just answer it. Let's go. What do you do, Sam? I, in my at home setup, have a Pelican case and that's where things live because it's very secure. Should a water pipe buster, I don't know, whatever happened, like it's, it's safe. Um, I've always been told you don't leave cameras out on the shelves just because dust and those types of things um, aren't great for cameras. So <laughs> it's best to keep them in somewhere. And the annoying you know, if I'm just going for a casual walk around, I have my day backpack, and so I put it in there. If I'm going on a bigger trip, I have my bigger bag, and I put it in there. Um, so, yeah, I kind of have my at-home setup and then my traveling setup. Um, but, yeah, I highly recommend if you got a second camera and you're running out of room, um, you need to be able to travel with all that stuff, but you also need to store it at home in some way. So, I don't know. I have a pile of bags right here that I'm going to be getting rid of actually. Um, and I know you're close. Biba Noise, I believe your name is Ben, but I always forget if it is Ben. But anyways, I know you're in San Jose, I believe. And if you would like a, one well, of the camera bags I have, we could link up. Um, Bill. Bill, Bill yeah. Benoist. I'm sorry, okay. Um, but yeah, anyways. 
Can you move bags? He's like, yes, so. I will take a bag. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you guys should meet up for coffee. Yeah. You can give him a you can give him a new camera bag. I do the same thing. I think most of my I actually like Sam. Sam turned me on to this. I don't know if he knows this, but I have two. So I I usually use a Shimoda backpack with all my camera stuff, and I'm usually either rocking a a, a video set or a a photo set, my wedding set, and I keep them both in internal those internal uh, what do you call them? Brit, bl- uh, you have one, don't you? Um, next to you, the internal I I did. like cube, the cube system. I, I see you. I see you. Sure, but they have little like um like thin layered. Uh, zipper pocket around it that you undo when it's in the backpack and then you can zip it up when it's out of the backpack and basically I switch them in or out based on what I need and then they sit on a shelf in my closet zipped up covered from dust if I'm not using it Um, and then like if I am using it all or I need to combo it like I have different bags with different film cameras uh, where it sits so I just like pick and choose like what I'm doing but most of the time they're in another case in a shelf in something and so yeah like that's probably the best way to keep it um but i i am one to talk because uh i have a ridiculous amount of camera bags and cases <laughs> like i have some that are just empty that i just like depending on the situation that i'm i'm using it in so that's why we're getting rid of this stuff i don't you don't you don't <laughs> this is a nice you know it's like a laptop i really don't like that bag <laughs> Compartments for camera stuff. It. I just took on a big trip. It worked fine, but like, I don't need it. I don't know. It's you don't. It just depends on what you're doing. But like, yeah. you know, as a hobbyist or whatever, like keeping stuff in your closet in another bag is great. I yeah. don't know. Um, Ryan's doing light painting with that 14 millimeter. That yeah. That's nice cool. Nice wide lens for that. Light painting's so fun. It's amazing what people do with light painting um yeah that's cool let's um i'm going to copy this link or i thought i was and put it in the chat somewhere gonna do it here i sure can here is a link will it work yeah wow cool see i again ecamm always surprises me (laughs) But this is our new lighting course. We had it only in Photography and Friends Plus. And if you haven't been to Photography and Friends Plus, uh, check it out. You can go to photographyandfriends.com slash plus. And um, basically, we launched it in that group. And we did a month-long boot camp. And, I, and um, Barry's here. I think I saw someone else here. Um, but, uh, oh, Greg, yeah. You can, we had a boot camp where we went over the lighting course. Um, and basically, we got like one-on-one time and Zooms. But now... We have put this class out to the public and you can go to that link right now. It's for sale for $10. And basically I go over all artificial light, including on camera, off camera flash. Um, I do a little bit of event photography, uh, I think with the wedding uh, stuff. And then I actually do a little bit of post and let's see, I do some, some demos, which are really cool. Our friend Danielle came out Um And we took some, we tried to replicate a photo and then we also tried to do some color photos and then we took Sam and put him outside um, because my friend Goose didn't show up. I wonder if he's watching. (laughs) He was supposed to come. And, uh, and yeah, we, we, you know, we're messing around with a lot of artificial light. Do you guys, I mean, we can do kind of an artificial light sort of Q and A here. If you guys want to talk about flashes or strobes or remotes. Um, I know those of you that are here, Greg, Barry, you guys, you know, we went over everything. But um, if you guys have any Q&As or questions about really anything, we just want to let you guys know about our lighting course and Photography Friends Plus. If you don't know who we are, we have a bunch of classes on Udemy. Um, we didn't really promote this live, which is really funny to see the numbers right now because we only have 12 people watching. Normally, we're up to like 40 or 50. It, um, it makes a difference apparently to... Yeah, to like be prepared and not just lo- <laughs> like haphazardly tell you guys we're doing a live the night before or like actually show up when we canceled our one last week. <laughs> I will say very, you know, that um, Barry's talking about she has 1680 F4, but really wants to get that 18 millimeter, which is yeah. a like faster aperture wide angle lenses have such a unique look, in my opinion. Like you can do such cool things with typically their close focus is a lot closer um, and you can just do some really, really cool stuff with that. So I definitely 
adding that to your kit would be a, a very cool, very cool thing. And then the 56 on the other end. It's great. Great combos. Yeah. Very yeah. a lot of camera straps too. Camera straps. <laughs> camera straps are another thing to collect. Yeah. You, know, you want to make them, you want to, you want your, you know, you need to be like, you need to have it for like what style your, your, your clothes are, what you're wearing. You want to look good. You know, I just got the wedding course. I'm like three hours in so much good info. I can't wait to finish the course. Thank you, Big Z fam. Uh, yeah, that course, when, when I redid it, I'm much more proud of it um, as a new course. And Sam helped me film that as well. Um, and for any of you that want to know how I edit, that's the only course that I have that's out where I'm the one teaching the editing. Um, and that's a new thing for me too. So, I mean, teaching it. I edit all the time. In fact, if jean Luca's is watching, I am almost done with your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much to edit still, but um, I'm going to be done with that in the next day or two. So that's nice. I feel like that's a big, you know, learning the post process. Yeah. And people edit. I Like if you're taking courses on photography and all this stuff, learning the craft of photography, of course, is important. But I think trying different people's editing courses would be an interesting thing because every photographer I've ever like sat and watched them edit, it's like, I don't know. It's like watching someone cook the same dish. Everyone's going to approach it slightly differently. You're doing the same things, but... But it'll you know, look different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, or just the way really... of doing it. And like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like if you ever go to those like paint by number, not paint by numbers, but like sip and paint things where you like go and like the, everyone paints sip to get... Paint? You ever heard of those oh. where they like have like wine and then everyone like like does a painting together and like everyone and everyone's doing the same thing sort of, but then everyone's painting ends up look, looking different because everyone brings their own sort of eye and perspective into editing and building. And I think it's the same for, for post editing. Um, oh, we got a question from Claudia Ramirez. What Claudia external Ramirez. lighting would you recommend for low light banquet halls? I struggle with blurry photos using an external flash. I just got a Canon 60 Mark II. Uh, well, that's on the new camera. That's exciting. Um, the first things in low light banquet halls, I will say, like, depending on the situation, sometimes if I can avoid using a flash, I avoid using a flash just because <laughs> it calls a lot of attention to you and um, can be distracting depending on what the situation is. And the way to do that would be, you know, what can the Canon 60 Mark II in terms of noise, like can you shoot at 3200 and still get a clean image um, or 6400? And that's something you just have to test for yourself to sort of see how, how those photos look um, before you go out taking photos. A faster lens, so maybe an F, at least an F2.8, maybe an F2, F1.4. Um, I wouldn't shoot F1.4 on anything longer than a 50 millimeter probably because it's going to be really shallow depth of field. Um, and then, yeah, and then your shutter just has to be at least one sixtieth or one one hundredth um, shutter speed. If all that doesn't work, <laughs> well, she can. did say she did say struggle yeah. blurry with an external flash. Oh well, that might just be settings because if you have an external flash, you should have plenty of light. I don't know what do you think. Yeah, theor theoretically, like uh, if you're using an external flash, you should make sure that you're using the right flash sync for that external flash. Um, and, and Sam's right. Usually that's around like 160th, 150th, 200 probably. Um, and then what I do in a low banquet hall with an external flash and making sure it's external, right? That it's not it's a big one, like a speed light, not the one that's internally built into your camera. The external will be much better putting a big uh, diffuser on top of it, shooting it into the ceiling, bouncing it off. The goal with like a banquet like that is to just make it like look soft and nice and even um, having the flash directly at a person kind of makes it look a little, I don't know, not good. <laughs> so if you can diffuse it or if you can shoot it into a ceiling or a wall where it will bounce off, which is also diffusing it or bouncing it off, um, that'll help a lot. Yeah, I use a speed light with a diffuser. Yeah, um, I think you just got to get into those settings. And we talk about that in the class and how to like find those settings um it's not going to be automatic like i don't i don't show up to a banquet hall and just know the settings like i every hall is different every lighting situation is different and uh i i end up testing it and seeing take a couple test shots and then roll with it um that's usually the best thing to do 
yeah, yeah. More questions. Let's go. <laughs> all that stuff is finding your style and your look. I mean, some people yeah. want to blast people with light, and that's their look. Um, but findings are what that is for you. And and if you're doing it routinely, it's great because that's practice makes perfect, and you can sort of figure that out. But um, yeah, and I will say, yeah, the line for we cover all this kind of stuff. So I'd highly recommend if if you have the time, it's on sale, ten bucks right now. Take that course. You can see how Will plays with different um, different setups with light and achieves different looks in that way. So, <laughs> good job, Sam. So, I don't know what Phil is that uses more. <laughs> uh, um, at least hey, we're up to eighteen people. That's nice. I'd love more yeah. photo questions. You guys got anything? Got anything else? I mean, if not, we'll make it a short session. But we're here for you. Brian, my portrait editing skills are not great either and i highly recommend just watching that's not how true approach it i well there's little tricks that you learn along the way and and i think that it's i don't know it's tricky it's, it's it tricky is. to make someone look natural and like if you do start bringing up shadows if you do start like doing certain things it, it affects how someone looks a lot and you know to send someone a photo and they're like this doesn't look like me that you know that doesn't, that doesn't happen, but I just would, wouldn't like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I equate it to like playing piano and like, um, I, you know, you, you sit down and you help someone else with like editing portraits, but like, I don't know, like I've been doing it for so long that I don't even think about it now. And I just like move through weddings and like edit stuff. And then when I doing actual portraits in front of a black background or whatever, like those ones I did with the digital Hasselblad, it like, it just, it, I don't know. You just kind of get into the zone and you know your tricks and what you're doing. Lightroom has really gotten a lot better with the masking and like the noise reduction and everything it's capable of doing. Um, so yeah, practice, practice. That's really the most the most thing. Practice on bad photos, practice on good photos, practice mm -hmm. on other people's photos, practice on different cameras. Uh, it's just, it's like muscle memory and getting used to looking at something. I feel the same way about culling through photos, like, like mm -hmm. going through a ton of photos is an art and deciding what you're going to deliver to your client. Like what you think is the best photo to right. practice. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, any other questions? I yeah. they just a picture showing straight up while laying on my back, cloudy day, but the sky blew out the whole picture. It was an experiment, but no idea how to make it better. Well, hard to say without seeing the photo, but you know, if it's an experiment, it's just sort of what didn't you like of it and what settings could you adjust to, you know, if it was blown out, you probably just needed to either increase the f-stop or slow down the shutter or something. If you're trying to get like that cloud movement, you probably want to increase the shutter stop or increase the f-stop, lower the ISO and keep the shutter speed kind of slow um yeah it but. was an experiment but no idea how to make it better i guess if you're trying to make it better in post uh try bringing down the highlights or maybe using the def the def was it <laughs> days thank you i'm like diffuser i've <laughs> been talking a lot about diffusing light today <laughs> uh the dehaze yeah if you if you like bring down or up dehazing that might bring back your um you know what you're trying to shoot and what you're what it's looking like yeah. I think we got another question there. Where did I see that? Bill, Bill asked, I have a YouTube channel where I need to have self portraits. Oh, do you have any recommendation for these for thumbnails? For I mean, any, yeah, any, any portrait lens, right? I mean, I would say at least 35 millimeter or longer on a full frame, probably 50 millimeter. But, um, if you have a little flippy screen or if you have a friend, um, you know, if it's just you, if you have a flippy screen, you can do self timers or walk in front, get position, takes a photo or have a friend, um, you know, stand at the tripod. You can sort of set up the frame and then you just go walk and, and take it. But yeah, 50 I think millimeter, it, 85 yeah. millimeter. I think a 35 or 50 is great for self portraits. All the portraits mm -hmm. that I take of actors and at weddings is an 85 on a full frame. Um, so if that means anything to you, 85 is great, but I think 85 is kind of tough to do self portraits with 
unless you have a big screen because you have to step away or you have a remote. Um, so like a 35 or 50 would probably be nice. I think people look better on 85 because of the compression. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think I just saw an Astro photography one. Where, where was that? Right? Yeah, Alejandro Magana. Magana. Magana? Um, asked for setup. I asked back sort of what Hello? I don't know Hello? what's happening. Oh, that's what's happening. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm so sorry, Sam. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Bill, I, the 56 on the APSC, that's close to an 85. That would be... A, a wonderful portrait lens, but it would be a bit trickier to do a self portrait with just because of the distance you need to get from the camera. Um, but it could be a good, I think they missed most of that because of my fault. <laughs> Maybe you need to start over. <laughs> what is this black screen in the middle of our thing? It's the, I'm, te no I am terrible at, is it my phone? Every time I turn my phone on, I feel like Ecamm brings it up. Why is, is your that... phone? Why is your phone connected to it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Turn how to use eCam. I'm sorry, friends. Hmm. Okay, Wi-Fi is off. Bluetooth is off. How do we well, get rid of this? I hope you all can still hear us and are enjoying the. Uh... I think there are. There's just. I feel like there's something between us, Sam. <laughs> like, come on. Oh, it's Phil. It's a space for Phil. It's a space We're, for Phil. Yeah. You're right. Well, let's just leave it there until Phil shows up. I don't know how to get it off without turning our live session off. So we're going to leave it. <laughs> okay. Um, Very good self portraits of 35 millimeter. The 56 okay. millimeter was too tight. She's on a crop sensor as well, Bill. So if you have a 35, maybe that would work. I do think you had said you have the Samyang 24 millimeter, which I believe is manual focus only, which might be a little tricky to hit the autofocus just right. Um, but yeah, maybe doing a, something wider would be good. Um, Big Z fam for the wedding wedding bundles. If you if your client wants to, more than 75 pictures that they will receive. How do you price if they want more after you deliver them? That's, wow, Will. <laughs> I am so sorry. I... There we go. <laughs> uh, I I usually do it by by photo. So um, yeah, if, if like I'll deliver 75 or I'll deliver 100 or I'll deliver 200, and then I'll work into the contract. If I feel like doing this, I'll work into the contract um, at like $5 a photo or $2 a photo or $1 a photo. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like most of my wedding packages are around um, the shortest. The three hour one is usually like 100 photos. And then the six hour and 12 hour ends up being 200 or 250. And usually what I say is, I'll deliver a minimum of 120 photos and I'll end up delivering maybe a hundred or closer to 200. And usually when you say like, you could say I'm going to deliver a minimum of 75 photos, but actually deliver a hundred. Um, that's like a good way of getting around that. Um, or just cap it. Like that's it. That's what your package is. You're only going to deliver 75 or you're going to deliver a hundred. Um, and just, you know, be cool with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also, in, in the past, we've talked about sort of that initial conversation being like, I'm going to deliver 75 photos. If you want more or if you want adjustments after the fact, um, I just request, you know, it's going to be this rate per hour of work. Um, right. And you just tell them that. It's just, you know, that's what it is. And that way they know, like, they're going to be paying for the extra work. So when they ask you, you can sort of, you've already discussed this. And it's not something that's also in like, yeah. you know, coming up at the well when you've already done a bunch of work um a lot of times i think that's the biggest thing is just how you discuss things with clients that it's upfront 
before anything is done and that there's, it's agreed on. And that way, when you get to these situations, it's like you have something to go back to of like, well, this is what we talked about and you agreed to it. Um, yeah. So Alejandro had asked about astrophotography. He has a A7 IV, great camera for it. Um, just with kit lenses, exploring options for a nice setup for astrophotography. Uh, the Sigma, I mean, Sony makes one too, it sort of depends on your budget, but Sigma makes, I believe, a 14 millimeter 1.4 um, that is, I wouldn't, you don't need to take photos at 1.4, but that's a wonderful, you know, big wide telephoto or uh, wide angle lens. Um, people really like the optics of it. Um, Otherwise, there's a 12 to 24 if you want a bit more of a you know zoom range. The Sigmas are, are great in that regard. There is the Sony equivalent. It's just going to be more expensive. And I think a lot of people online sort of debate um, if it's worth extra money for those Sony ones. They are optically, I think, a little bit better. But I think if you're just getting started, you know, going that route would be a good way to start. Um, and yeah, get uh photo pills if you can and learn you know which way is north so you can take photos towards the north star photo and start pills is, photo pills is an app that you can get on your phone yeah. An app, yeah, yeah um but yeah that'd be a great that's where i would start um i think you want to go wider than 24 millimeters if you can yeah for sure Definitely. um and yeah there's another question um, Eric Flores asks, when I zoom, it minimizes the adjustments I can make. Do I, do I need to maybe buy a telephoto, I'm assuming lens, I use a Canon PowerShot SX540 HS. I'm assuming that is using a, um, digital zoom. So on your camera, let me double check. I'm pretty sure that camera will have. It has a built-in zoom, but then it also has a digital zoom. If you can turn off the digital zoom, um, that's going to greatly reduce the um, amount that you can adjust the photo because it's, all it's doing is zooming in on your pixels, um, whereas the optical zoom is going to be from the glass. So you oh. shouldn't lose any quality oh, with that. Um, but if you, yeah, I would just recommend turning off any digital zoom because that's going to uh, impact the quality of your your image ultimately. Um, Good answer. Yeah. Sam's just killing it over here answering stuff and I'm just messing around. <laughs> Any more questions? I'm going to figure out life. Well. <laughs> I think I got it figured out. <laughs> this is rough. Ecamm's rough. You know, we don't give Phil enough credit for stuff, you know? Or maybe we do. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. Who knows? Um, uh, yeah, 22 millimeter. I mean, listen, I have, yeah, 22 millimeter, even the 24 millimeter, um, for your APS-C, I think that'd be great lens bill for a self-portrait. I think that's going to be a nice focal length. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, learning to take a photo by yourself. I believe very in our photo and friends community had posted her self-portraits. I don't know if. Or was that just in the lighting? That was in the yeah. lighting one. That was in the lighting one. Because so when we do the boot camps, you get your own. We get your own discussion group where you, it's only those folks that showed up in the boot camp. And um, we did. I had them do like a self portrait with their lighting because it's the best way to practice. Yeah. So gotcha. yeah. Well, never mind then. But practicing self portraits, I would just be willing to take a few take them into the computer, see how they look, and then make adjustments accordingly. Um, I would, you know, try and have fun with it. I, taking self portraits is really difficult in my opinion, because I don't like taking photos of myself or having people take photos of me. So I think just playing with it and having fun with it would be um, well worth, well worth it. Um, yeah, and you have, if you haven't joined, speaking of Photo and Friends Plus, I just put a link in the, the description there. Um, where you guys can join Photo and Friends Plus. It's our own community, kind of away from Facebook, away from other stuff, just to keep it focused on us and photography. If you join, uh, you can join for free. And then if you subscribe to us, it's only $5 a month. 
uh, we are able to interact with you guys a little bit quicker and faster and we get alerts with those. And so you can kind of ask us questions offline as well. Um, and it's also where, where we will be posting our most up to date classes, the first, and also, um, if anyone cares, my blog, <laughs> I always post there first before anywhere else. Um, and so that's kind of like a good spot for that. Um, and you'll get to hear about all our new things before anyone else. If you pay the $5. Got any other questions? Like I sound like a salesman, but you know, I got to do it. Another, I think there was another question. Which lens? You said Sigma four hundred millimeter, four point five. Which one you said that question? I'm writing that out now. Okay. No, very, very had a. Oh yeah, here it is. How I got it. Um, how consistent are you in terms of style in different photo shootings? I realize that different days clients inspire me different color styles. Yeah, that's a good question, Barry. I, I go back and forth with this a lot, mostly because, um, what do you call it? I don't know. I, 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 sometimes when you're hired to take certain photos or I do this a lot more with cinematography is like you're hired to do a specific style. And I think that over time, and I've noticed this in my wedding photography over time, you build up a portfolio and you sort of create your own style that you're happy with, that you're developing. And that just takes time. I really honestly believe that like any artist doing anything, especially for money, it sort of just takes time and you develop as an artist, as you go through life, as you go through equipment, as you learn new things, as you have new experiences, as you start to research other photographers and get inspired, your style will develop and it's, it's going to change and go back and forth quite a bit um, as you move on. And that includes color styles, all that stuff. Um, like I, I don't know, Sam, like, I know I can tell Sam's style for the most part because I've looked at his photos for so long and I have people say that about mine as well. Like, and I definitely obviously lean heavily into black and whites, but even my compositions at weddings and stuff, you get hired specifically for your style and what you're doing. Um, so to be consistent in that sense, because you want to be hired for your photography or you could be a chameleon and you just kind of can shoot anything. Um, it kind of depends on how you go about it. Do you, I mean, Sam, do you feel the same way? Like, do you feel like you have a consistent photographic style or do you lean towards one? Or do you feel like you're changing things up all the time? Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, like optics, like if, you know, getting a new lens or different camera system, you know, changes the way that I approach photography, um, but yeah, I think how I, the things that appeal to me when it comes to editing and the types of compositions I do, all that is very intuitive and just like the way that I approach photography. Um, that being said, when I was taking photos of like Major Laser versus when I'm taking photos of kids in Nepal with a, you know, the clean water system for a nonprofit, um, the visuals are drastically different. And so how I'm going to edit those, like how I'm going to edit a kid drinking water versus, you know, a crowd of people with DJs and flames on stage, like, yeah, sure. They're going to feel different. Um, and that's just the nature of who I'm taking photos for. And I'm not going to try and be like, well, I only have, you know, desaturated images with, you know, saturated blues. Like that's the same Shimizu style. Um, <laughs> And some people are like that. Some people are like, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what you're looking at. It could be a, a camping photo and it could be a, a photo of French toast. Like they're all going to have the same preset look. The same look. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, in some regards, I guess back in the day used to, you know, photographers would mainly shoot a certain film stock. And so that was sort of the tones of their work. But um I don't know. I, yeah, I think it, I think it changes and I think it's good to adjust what feels right to you. And I think not ever saying like, well, this is how I do it and this is how it has to be. I think it's always for me more. Does that look good? Yeah. I like that. Okay. I'm going to do that. Yeah. And I it like doesn't, I, I've never gone back and been like, this needs to match my body of work. But like Will says, he looks at my stuff and he's like, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> your you eye and that look yeah but, but i've just seen you grow as an artist i think because we've known each other for so long 
Um, and yeah. you can track that with any type of artist, I think. We had a sound yeah. uh, production or a sound teacher in grad school, and I'm sure I've told this story, but he was always like, stop worrying about like maybe your client or like the numbers and the, the histogram or whatever you used in sound. He's like, does it sound good? Like, are you happy? Like, does it feel good to you? And I feel like that's a huge thing in photography is like you can edit all day. Like you can, I can spend, I don't know, infinite amount of time on a photo, but there's a point where, you know, does it look good? Then you're, you're good. Like, do you think it can look better? Maybe, but like, is it ready to be shared? Are you ready to express what you need to express? Um, I forgot who said that saying like, you know, your work, your creative work is never finished. It's only abandoned and you just let it go. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where we, did we go off the deep end there? I don't know. Did any no, of you have any a, opinions? <laughs> it's, it's a good, and I don't know how, how you all feel about when it comes to photography and, and personal style and all this stuff. I mean, I think it's, I know we've talked about like imposter syndrome where we've talked about, yeah. you know, creatively feeling like really excited and like there's few photos that I go back to that I'm just like in love with. Um, and at the same time, there's certain photos I've printed and I love that I have them printed because it's like, I don't know if it's lost in my iPhone library or whatever. I'm probably, you know, it pops up yeah. every now and then, but, um, I think finding that just with each photo, just have fun with it. Just, edit it what feels good to you and that's just all it can be it you know i i wouldn't get too lost in the the analytics of how your entire body of work would look and that might be i mean maybe some person in a fine art school in new york is rolling over right now but like that's just how i see it you know um i'm sure other people believe you you have to lock in your style because that's mm. uh, that thing but i think if it looks good to you that's going to de develop your style um, i do think there's a benefit to finding one sooner than later and being consistent if you're trying to get hired for that specific look um it will help you because yeah. you're being hired for that look uh if you're all over the place yeah that might be rough but you know it also depends on your market i also think approach is a big part of that um like how you shoot something yeah I, I think a lot of people enjoy working with Will and, and with myself because they like hanging out with us. Um, We're chill dudes. Yeah. I, like, I, I think there's, there's also that level. Like I had a friend who was an, is an, is an amazing photographer. And I had another friend, another friend who works in a, a in the creative agency world. And like, we want to bring him on for certain jobs, but there's other jobs. Like I just know how he works won't fit a run and gun thing. Like sure it'll work if we have the entire day to take, you know, five photos, but those five photos will be immaculate and perfect because that's how he approaches it. And I think when people learn your style of how you approach taking photos, that's another big part of it. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. To that point, you know, I, I recently had someone tell me like, Oh, your approach is, or I don't want to send you examples of what I want. I want what you do. And I think that's what we're all sort of aiming for. It's not that we want to go and replicate someone else's work for a client. It's that the right. client wants us to bring our creative vision to it. Um, so, yeah. Good answer. That was a deep answer. Good question, Barry. Barry, yeah. I was coming in with the... Good luck with that. I'd love to have an open discussion with everyone about that. Like, I feel like with all this stuff, we get into the technical things and whatnot. Um, and well, get more into like the art and the vibes yeah, of, of, yeah. of what we're doing. Yeah. A little bit. And just, if anyone has a question, happy to talk about that, but I'm going to go on, a, on this tangent. Um, like I'm, I'm getting rid of all my photo gear and <laughs> I'm just going to keep um, my like a Q2. Um, and it's just for sake of having less and just like, I know it's an amazing camera. It's capable of what I need it to be. Um, and I'm just going to do that. I've taken portraits with it that are my favorite portraits I've taken. I mean, this is with the original Q, but like this big, big picture. Man. Um, that print used to be in an office that Sam and I had in LA over our yeah. couch. We had the biggest office we could find. <laughs> And it looks right. beautiful. And that's the original cue. Yeah. 
and it's cropped in. That's probably like a 10 megapixel image and it's great. It's all you need. Yeah. And you got it on some nice paper. Ooh, we got some questions coming in, but that, yeah, I, I like this journey for you. Uh, yeah. 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 It's just for me right now, less is more. I, and I'm all about building out camera kits and all this stuff and happy to talk about it. And for whatever reason, I've just felt having more is less right now. So I'm just going to have less. Um, we got some questions coming in. Should we start yeah. with Shutterbug Denise? That's the more first one that pops up on mine. What about Uli? Oh, Uli. Sh- oh interesting. They're different on. Oh, yeah, let's, okay. We'll yeah. do, we'll do Yuli. You're, you're up first. I can look at the YouTube here. Okay. There's a dilemma for me. Do I give like 20 to 25 photos per hour or is it just five to 10 with the retouching that I love? Ooh, that is a good question. That's a very like specific, like however you feel like if you feel like you want to spend more time on the editing in an hour on five or 10 versus 20 to 25 and that's your business model, I think that that's perfectly fine. Um, it just depends on how you want to sell yourself. 20 to 25 photos per hour is uh, is a decent amount for weddings. And I think that that probably works okay because they're not all that, like not every wedding photo is like for uh, print, right? It may be just for record keeping or art. You know, it's just like, who is there? Like people laughing. Like it doesn't have to be like a crazy amount of time spent editing on it. Five to 10 photos is kind of what I deliver for like a portrait session um, because those are very specific and need a lot more editing and stuff. So it just depends on how you want to market yourself and how you feel, how you'd want to edit basically, I think. Well, what's the next, what's the next one? That, yeah, that's a good answer. Hmm. Shutterbug, Denise. Hi, Will and Sam. I have a question regarding midtones. I can understand highlights, whites, blacks, and I have trouble identifying the midtones. What exactly are they? Sam's going to take this one. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, You're so good at coloring video. I feel like the midtones in video are probably the more important things, and, and they it equates to photos really well. So, so in the image of me right now, my <laughs> hair is probably the blacks. That would be the darkest thing. There's close to no information there. It's dark. Uh, maybe the back of my chair. And then the highlights in the picture frame, you can see a light there. And also on my door, that looks probably the most blown out. Oh, no, wrong wrong hand. Right mm. there. That's the whitest. That's the highlight. Highlights. So yeah. that's your brightest point and your darkest point. And those are what we use to create contrast. How far can we take the highlights? How far can we take the blacks to not just be completely blown out or completely crushed black? Or well, where are the much- midtones? Midtones, typically speaking, you would want your skin slightly above that middle point, right? Well, yeah. you'd want it slightly above. Um, but the skin is typically what you're trying to have more in the middle ground, I believe. Um, maybe a little bit over that, like 60% opposed to 50%. Um, but it all depends on the image that you're looking at. Um, if you're doing a landscape, for example, your sky is probably going to be much more in the highlights, much brighter, but you don't want to lose that information. So you bring it down a little bit. Um, and then the land itself, unless you're going for silhouette would probably be more the midtones. It'd be more, um, the middle of the histogram range. It really depends on the image. I would say if you really want to get into this stuff, you always have your histogram up when you're editing photos. That's the, the mountain looking thing. Um, and that will show you basically as you move things, it'll move the mountains to the left, to the right with the highlights and stuff. Everything in the middle is your midtones. So um, if you're using a photo editor like, like Lightroom, you should have something that is um, either you can adjust the colors of the midtones or you can just... Um, you know, play with highlights and shadows and sort of see as you move those things on the histogram, where is it moving? And then what are those things in the middle? But it's, yeah, it's, I guess the easy way to say it is that if you were to do the, the blacks to the shadows, so my hair, the painting um, over here, like these are kind of the shadows, even on my shirt a little bit, well, over here is like kind of the shadow E area. This is probably still closer to the midtones. And then you have the highlight, you know, or the white spot, the brightest 
part right there. But then like on my shoulders and stuff, you have these highlights of, of natural light coming in. Those are the highlights and shadows. Everything else is midtones. That wall behind me is midtone. My face more or less, I mean, it has contrast on it, but um, yeah, that's more middle of the road. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I thought it did. I'm sorry. They should respond. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. Yeah. I, that's, yeah, that's getting deep into editing stuff, um, which I think is really good. Yeah. If you really like the histogram and all this stuff is, it is quite, it's mathematical. Um, so you really can use that histogram to like professional colorists don't need to be artists. They can literally just work off of numbers and your skin tone should always be at 60%. And well, depending on what type of skin tone, a light, fair skin can be a little bit more, a darker skin can be a little bit less, but, um, yeah, it is all paint by numbers in a sense. So, um, Yes. When is the color balance? It has three divisions, highlight, midtones, shadows. Yeah, exactly. So, and then you can also sort of see which colors are in those highlights, shadows, you know, like if you had a blue sky in your image, that's probably, you have a bunch of blues in your highlights. And then if you had like, I don't know, a red sand beach or whatever that was in the shadows, like all your reds would be in the shadows. Um, and then you can select out those specific colors to bring them up or down if you want as well. Um, which is getting really deep into editing stuff. Yeah. All right. We got a couple more questions, but good, okay. good, uh, good question. <laughs> uh, oh, I lost it. Oh, here's varies. Um, another question. How do you choose a second camera backup camera, same brand or completely different camera or exactly the same camera? Mm. This depends on what you're doing. I think. Yeah. I think ideally for me shooting weddings, like, same camera brand, a thousand percent, just because I want the sensors to match. Um, you have two cameras. If anyway. camera brand, same camera brand. Uh, if I can make it the exact same camera, I would. But mm -hmm. that's not always possible because your main camera may be too expensive. In my case, um, I do use my Leica Q2 as my backup camera, no matter what, for everything, because it can handle everything if I need it to. Um, at, yeah. in a pinch, but in an ideal world, I would really have the same body on my left and my right as a dual cameras or as a backup camera. I have a really weird, interesting situation because I do so much video stuff and Sam and I have a production company together. And so for me, I actually, it made sense for us to buy an a seven R five. Yeah. Which is like, Great for all our video stuff, but it also made me and, and like we could have just gotten another Sony FX3, but I wanted that camera specifically because it does video stuff for us as B camera. But I know that in an absolute dire pinch, if one of my still cameras goes down, I can jump on that a seven and it will be perfectly fine and I'll be able to deliver my clients photos um, that work well. That's not like an ideal situation. Like I don't want to be shooting photos with Sony because that's just not my style. I don't like shooting photos with Sony's, but it's there as a backup. Um, so, you know, it can be a different brand. It should be the same brand if you can, because also all your lenses will work across both. Um, I think also an ideal world for me, if I could afford it, I would get the version of my camera that has higher megapixels so that that one would be my main camera. And then the lower megapixel one might be my backup in low light or uh you know vice versa so it, it really depends on your situation i don't it's good to have a backup though and um i don't know sam do you have I, any opinion? i would say if like for let's say you're shooting on the xt4 and you love that camera and you've been with it for many years and then the xt6 comes out yo know, i see no reason that you want like i don't think you need to go and get another xt4 you could get the newer camera and then your older camera becomes your right second that's that's camera. the best way to do it i think probably yeah i think that's sort of the, the natural progression unless you're able to go and buy two cameras at the same time but um absolutely same camera system being able to you know use lenses across and the only reason i think to if you're outright buying two new cameras the only reason to buy two different ones is that if you were doing hybrid shooting where you wanted one that's better for video and one that's better for photo but both sure. should do either one Right. Um, 
but other than that, yeah, there's no real, I don't see any reason to, to not do that. Good question. Also, yeah. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Um, how about this one? And who chooses this five to 10 photos? You or the customer? I feel like sometimes the customer doesn't choose the best pictures. Yeah, you are totally right. So when I first started wet wedding photography and shooting for clients, um, my business partner and I would show, we would say we shot 4,000 photo photos, but we were only going to deliver 200. I would still show them a thousand photos and be like, hey, go ahead and pick out your 200 or your 250 photos. Or like in this case, uh, if it's a portrait session, I'll show you 30 and you can pick out five. Um, it varies, right? For wedding photography, they would end up never picking their photos because they liked all of them and they couldn't decide and it would take forever. And then I wouldn't ever edit anything. Um, or it would be like a year later. Um, the advantage to that is that when they see that you've taken a thousand photos and you've marked them up, like we talked about earlier, they'll want to buy the rest of them because they see them. So there's a business side to that that i didn't want to deal with like i i don't care i'm gonna pick the 200 photos and i'm gonna give them to you like that's it like if there's like oh hey by chance did you get a shot of this i'll go through and look and maybe i'll deliver that one just on the house but i i'm over having clients pick their photos for a wedding for headshots it's very different because actors specifically who i shoot a lot for they're gonna want to know they're gonna want very specific looks so I will show them like the 20 and have them pick their five. And then I will upcharge for extra photos in that case, because I'll be like, oh, it's 20 bucks extra for any other photos or 25, because that's how long it takes me to edit or whatever. Um, for for headshots with corporate, like for like LinkedIn or stuff, most of those people are not photographers and they're not used to picking photos. You should just pick them yourselves and deliver them. Um, a lot of times people just don't know and they feel more comfortable with you as a photographer picking out those photos. So you're right. Um, you know, it just depends on the situation again, but I, I think it's always safer for you to pick the photos and deliver them, not give them the options to do it unless it's like an actor. Sam, you agree? I don't know. Yeah, no, I do. I, I think that there's a, a kind of a, there's X amount of photos that are just going to be bad. People are making weird faces, they're blurry, whatever it is. And and I would never share those, but I do to some degree understand, um, you know, to say that someone's choosing a bad photo versus one that you consider to be a good photo. Yeah. Um, subjective. You know, it's yeah. And so, especially for a wedding or something like that, like that is so much their prerogative to say, like, I mean, you might not get it, but that's the stuff you know, the wild face that my uncle always makes. And so it makes, it brings me joy. Whereas <laughs> you're looking at it and you're like, this guy's making like a crazy face. Like there's no way I'm going to deliver that. So yeah, I, I, I do think there's a, a level of, of selecting out which photos you're going to share with people ultimately. Um, and I think it takes more time and effort for you to go through all that. But again, this comes into it's your body of work. And so if that's going to be shown publicly, that represents your work. Well, it also comes down to the fact that they're paying you to do that. And so, yeah, this is all where as a professional from the get go, set a contract, set what you're going to deliver and let them know that have the discussion and maybe they want all your raw photos. All right. Well, that costs a premium because you don't do that. Or some people just don't do that full stop, but you know, maybe they want, you know, more for i don't know just more and so you you just sort of make an arrangement there but you know you'll have your five to ten photos that are the portfolio pieces for yourself that really you're excited about but i don't know i think if you're going to go take photos of an event for someone um they're probably i don't know most of the times i've had people want to see more more photos so yeah, yeah. Um, Yuli, if you want to post your website in the photo and friends plus, we'd be, I think we'd be happy to take a look at it in there. I think we're kind of running out of time and I don't want to go down a path of looking at everybody's website on the lives <laughs> quite yet, but maybe we could do that as like a, as like a live, uh, session sometime where everyone submits their website, but definitely post it in photography and friends plus and tag us. And, um, Sam and I'll definitely take a look at it. Um, that really goes for all of you. If you, if you quickly like today and we'll, we'll keep an eye on it today. Like if you guys post your website, we can, uh, make a quick comment, tag us in photo and friends. Plus you can join the link is up above. 
Um, I think we're kind of running out of time here, though, in general. Sam, is there anything else you want to talk about? Please like the video. It helps other people find it. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Go check out the new lighting course. If you've taken the lighting course, please review it on Udemy. That makes a huge difference for us. Um, leaving a review, both the stars and also a... On Udemy, yeah. Or right up on Udemy. It really, really helps us um, get it out in front of other people. Um, check out the review. lighting course. Yeah, check out the lighting course. Check out the new wedding photography course we just updated a little bit ago. Um, check out photoandfriends.com and join the community if you haven't already. Plus, 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 plus. And, you know, this, I feel like this is sort of a core crew of people that always shows up on here. If there is anything that you all are thinking about that we can do more of or do better or anything like that, please let us know because we do really enjoy doing this stuff and we want to do more of it, but we also want to make sure it's worthwhile for all of you. Um, and yeah, please. I got four likes from asking you to like, and there's 17 people. <laughs> yeah, what's the deal? What's the deal? Real quick, X E X I F data shows sometimes it tells you how many meters you are from the subject, but not always. Would you have any idea why? Probably your camera just couldn't pick it up. Um, or okay. yeah, what's certain that? lenses maybe like yeah, certain, certain lenses lens. might not share that just, information might be having trouble detecting it um or the leads you can try undoing your lens and going putting it back on um that's always like a good uh test to see if that but who you know that'd be my guess i think it'd be lens because the lens is doing the focusing and so that's going to tell you the distance i'd be oh, curious yeah. about Denise, if if you look at those lenses or the photos that don't have that like is that from a manual focused lens or maybe a off-brand lens something like there that there you go yeah. Or your autofocus might not be on. Um, but check it out. Anyway, thank all of you for coming. And uh, we really appreciate it. And we want to keep doing it. Weekend. Sorry, this is so last minute. We promise we'll be more on top of things soon. Don't get outside <laughs> and take photos. Be excellent to each other. Goodbye. <laughs>